things of that nature. On the um, first roof of the sporting bus network, the, the last increase was in last year's budget, um, and it was also a temporary increase. Um, I think it's, it's part of a longer term recognition that furs on the supported bus network are lagging somewhere behind furs on the commercial network. And although it's a difficult decision to um, put furs on, it's it, increasing, <coughs> increasing furs enables us to retain more of the supported bus network than we because we use that income to recycle into the supported bus network. So it's a difficult decision because it means that more of the network, we're able to keep more of the network in place than we would do otherwise. Um, and the furs on the supported network are still less than the furs on the commercial network. Uh, on the, the feed issue, I can see Gary's going to get it. <laughs> So, so I think probably explain what a leaky feed it is. It, in a way, it's how within the tunnels we rebroadcast information. Usually, for example, we uh, through mobile telephones or also through some of the local radio channels we will rebroadcast information. If the system is, is, is a bunch of 20 years old, but as John's alluded to, historically, one of the solutions may have been sort of the large cash renewal in there, but our approach has been potentially a bit different. We're looking at avenues in which we could generate revenue and deliver some improved infrastructure in there through actually the you know, cost of the organisation. So that's why you don't see it directly in the capital programme. There will be some, in, in, in the short term, there will be some necessary repairs to the equipment that we can do with the revenue budgets. Just on the comments in respect of the downtrenched and support bus services. What we've also recognised is we've put new terms and conditions for support bus services to upgrade the quality of the provision of that. And to a large extent, those new arrangements start to be in place from April. So obviously there's some increased aspects to that on the cost and therefore some of the revenue being raised will, will contribute towards that better off. At the moment, it's quite a differential between the standard on the supported services provision if you go by bus and the standard on the commercial we've done through the alliance. But, and so it's trying to close that differential. That's uh, John and then that's it. Thanks, Chair. I just want to commend the comments that Council Folks has made, really, and um, just commend John and colleagues on the clarity of the report here. I think it's really, really straightforward. In the past, historically, not only within this uh, authority, but within back in our own authorities in our district, we used to get basically a telephone, uh, you know, literally was that size, it was a huge report that really lacked clarity and hit, hit the, the key messages. This is very simple and straightforward, and I really do want to commend you on that. I'm pleased to carry on with it. I also want to make the comment about uh, the reduction of the levy as well, which is leading to a hundred pound and the reduction to clearly really less cost pressures on the districts as well. So I think that's hugely important for them to enable them to make different decisions. So we're all very grateful for that. Um, finally, just one note to dissent, John. It's just on page 27. I've noticed a typo. Uh, if you look at the 4.5. The table below details proposed revenue budget for Mercy Travel for 2018 19 and the revised estimate for 2016 17. I think that's wrong, it just needs to change in something. So they need to be. Okay, but other than that, minor point, I really just want to commend the quality and clarity of this report. It really is very good. So thank you. Thanks, John. You can take the teacher out of school. Um, that's, a, that's equivalent to a C me that job. <laughs> <laughs> Later. <laughs> yes. Got a red pen. You know. <laughs> <laughs>
the service implication, any decisions that are taken as a result of this budget will clearly have to go through a proportionate screening process and will do. Um, but uh, in, in the budget itself, we, there's, there's, there are no changes to services inferred within this budget. So as a result, we're not doing anything differently uh, in terms of the policy or policy changes. If any policy changes have to be brought forward in the next year because of the need to, uh, because the financial situation changes, then obviously that process will have to take place. Um, Louise, do you want to say anything about that? There is a general, there is a general forward to be completed for all reports, and that results in the outcome of no um, positive impact because, as John has explained, when the details of course process in relation to every single decision that's taken. There's no further questions on the south school. Chairman. Oh, sorry, Alan, I didn't spot you. It's okay, may I? Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, whenever we talk about finance, be it here or in our own authorities, we always hear about austerity and how these books this wicked government is performing and cutting this and cutting that and cutting the other. What we do not hear, we do not hear of anyone else any uh, any viable alternative. The the I'll give you a few in a minute, mate. Carry on. Carry on. Yeah, I'll carry on. I'll carry on. I'm talking here about viable alternatives, Mr. Chairman. Fair comment. Fair comment. And now, I mean, the, the simple question is, the simple point is that we are where we are, and we have to cope with what we've got. This report is excellent. It shows how we can get a quart out of a pint pot. And so, yes, we will have devoted for it, but we must consider where we are in, in the whole sphere of the finances as we strive to bring the, the, the overall deficit down. Just what I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you said that, Alan, because that's no answer to the response so please let me have my say because I have to say Alan I'm, I'm really disappointed with those comments about and I presume you didn't mean to do this but trivialising austerity I can say it's oh, no, 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 not it. people are struggling and suffering every damn day who can't afford to feed themselves can't afford to pay the gas bill struggling with the rent and I'm sure there's people like that in your own ward as well and you might not have meant it in those senses, but there are viable alternatives, actually. How you manage the economy in this country. And austerity has been proven to fail. Not only has it kind of wrecked public services, and it's continuing to wreck public services. And my God, my wife works for the NHS, so don't get me started on that one. Believe you me, there are different ways, and other economies are doing that. And when we get change of government, and I hope that isn't long, believe you me, we'll start doing that differently. But... In summing up this overall uh, budget, Steve's absolutely right that it is an austerity budget and it makes it really quite difficult. I think when you look at it in the round, if you look at our transport spending here in the Liverpool City region, in real terms it's gone down by a third since the change government in 2010. A third of our budget has gone. Just think of the things we could have done with that. Just think of the kind of additional services that we could have done that would make life easier for people to get around, to get to job opportunities, to attract new jobs here, allow people to live their lives in the way that they want to. The last time our transport spending was at this level in real terms was the mid-1990s. It's wiped out over 20 years of progress, and I think that's something everyone needs to have in the back of their mind. But let's be very clear about the fact that as difficult as this is, and there's some difficult decisions in this, actually we're doing wonderful things in difficult circumstances. It's a really positive year ahead about the things that we're going to be delivering on the network. McGull North will open, the Halton Curve will open, Nuclear Willows will be completely transformed. 
We've got a brand new fleet of trains that will start coming to the city region in the next year. Uh, we've got all the opportunities in regards to the new services, Northern, Trans Pennine, and others are going to start running. Later on in the year, we'll crack on with the process of bringing new ferries to the River Mersey. Some great opportunities in terms of what we're going to be doing. And as difficult as some of the kind of decisions are, and I think Steve highlighted best of all the issue of bus fares, it's a really difficult decision uh, in this budget to increase the support of the bus fares. But let's be really clear about this. Actually, whilst we've had got to do this, the bus fares that are for a stagecoach are charging are too damn expensive. And actually, now they need to look at coming down to two pounds rather than us chasing after that. And where I think there's a great opportunity, a fantastic opportunity, is with the new devolved powers that actually are coming to our city region. And the detailed work that we have already commenced, because what I hope is that gives us new opportunities to give more affordable transport for people who will get more people on the buses. And you know what? We might not be battered down at the door now with uh, the issue of what kind of fares might be, but I really hope with those devolved powers, more people will see this an opportunity to raise the issue get something that uh, delivers something much better for people travelling around. So with all of that in mind, I really want to commend uh, the officers for pulling together a fantastic budget in difficult circumstances. Uh, and if I can commend this, I recommend that we move the recommendations in paragraph two of the report to be that's good. Wonderful. Okay, moving on then, uh, we've got one of our operator uh, presentations.